Hey guys, it's Tom. Sorry for such a long absence from making videos. I've been uh, working really hard on some amazing shows. I got to work on the new John Wick and The Last of Us and uh, 1923 and just a bunch of other really cool shows that I'm really proud of. So make sure you check those out. Uh, I did get a request, which I thought was important to make a video about, on conforming a session from an old edit to a new edit. So meaning that you've been working on this show, whether it's a TV show or a movie for X amount of days, weeks, months, years, and then the producer or editor or director calls you up and says, hey, I got great news. No, we're not going to pay you more. No, you're not going to get more time. But we did re-edit this show to improve actor performance or extend runtime or cut down runtime or whatever because their mom told them they didn't like it. So they went into this episode or or movie and changed a bunch of stuff because they felt like it improved the um, the final product, knowing full well that you've been working on it and that you're going to have to chase those changes, but not knowing how much of a pain in the butt it is. And it, it's, it is. It's like the, my least favorite thing to do is conforming. Um, versions, but happens a lot, especially it seems like the higher the budget, the more conforms you have to do. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. One is kind of the old school way by hand. Uh, and the other way is using some software called Matchbox, which is by Cargo Cult. This program has saved me so many hours of manually conforming. It's really nice. Uh, it is, it's a little bit expensive, but if you're Charging by the job, it will make you more money. And if you're charging by the hour, then it lets you spend those hours doing stuff that you actually want to do, which is not conforming to a new cut of the picture. So I, I think it's great. But if you don't want to pay for it, then, you know, the old, old school way works fine. So to start with, I've got a really simple session. You see the video and dialogue guide are called Old Cut. I've got five dialogue tracks and I've got an aux. Your session is probably gonna be way bigger than this with hundreds of tracks and routing and, and all kinds of stuff going on. But just for the sake of keeping it simple and easy to look at, this is what I've got for us to work with. It's very important when you're conforming to conform not only the edit tracks, the feeder tracks, uh, unit tracks, whatever you wanna call them, but also all of your aux automation and your track automation. So. The first step we're gonna do, knowing that we have a new edit of this show, is we're gonna make a group with all of the tracks that we need to conform. So make sure you've got any hidden stuff unhidden and that you're you're just conforming, you know, all the tracks that you need to conform. Sometimes you'll have extra ones that you can just dump out. The less tracks you have in your session, the faster the conform will go because you're not having to copy and paste so much data. So if you have any old um, OMF tracks or uh, X tracks that you don't think you're going to need, you can ditch those. But otherwise, we're just going to select all these tracks and then we're going to do Command G, make a new group. We're going to call this group Conform. Seems simple enough. Now your groups need to be enabled for it, you to actually be able to do this right. You can see I, I can still select one track at a time. So to enable your groups to shift command G, you'll see they are no longer grayed out and I can highlight everything all at once. Another thing you need to make sure of is that your tracks are set to waveform and your auxes are set to volume. Uh, I'm not sure if this is still the case, but when I first started, we had to make sure the aux tracks were set to volume. Otherwise it would only copy like the automation lane that it was that was showing that might have changed i'm too scared to test that i'm getting too old to learn new stuff so i just always make sure that the auxes are set to volume and the clips are set to waveform you can also turn the video track to blocks instead of frames which will save you a little bit of cpu i think um, but right now we're set to where i can move this whole block of tracks some people also create a region group uh which is i think I think it's alt command G. Yeah, but you know, I don't like doing that because you end up with a bunch of orphan groups. Um, and I like to kind of look at the clip names and stuff while I'm working. 
So it's just something that, that I, don't, I don't do, but I know it's a thing that other people do. So we have the old cut. We have our tracks. We need to bring in the new cut and kind of see where the bodies lay as far as how much this has changed. So since I'm showing you the, the by hand, the manual way first, we are going to bring in, I can actually suspend groups right now because I want to bring the new video track in up here. So let me import a new video. You can see I've got um, folders set up for old cut and new cut. So we're going to go to new cut, bring in the video. We'll put it on a new track. And I'm going to put these up top. I like to have the newer stuff up top. So I've got the video, but it's way faster to compare the waveforms on the guide track. So the next thing I'm going to do is import the wave file for the guide track. So we can kind of look at how different things are. Okay. So it looks like the first thing I, I'm just kind of buzzing through to see the waveforms like, you know, these are different waveforms here. I can re-enable my grouping. So shift command G just so I can, oh, I need to disable all. That's something I think on a new session that is automatically enabled. So make sure you disable all and enable your conform group. You can probably disable other groups if you have them too, but the conform one is the most important one to make sure that you've got enabled. Let's see the, the top of the show here. So all I'm doing is blowing up the waveforms and looking at the, if they line up. Here's a nice transient to line up. I can see that perfectly lined up. And it looks like all the way up to the titles, it's fine. Let's see here. These are all in sync. There's a little break there. These are all fine. Where does it start to go out? So this is why the manual way can be a little bit, well, it takes a lot longer, but you're sure to be more uh, hands-on with it and more thorough. So I, the waveform is still lined up. This is like nine and a half minutes in. So we're pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so here we've got a big, not a big shift, but a shift. There's this gap here, it looks like an act break. And we need to move that over. So what I like to do is make sure I'm in grid mode. Before I start moving anything, what I, what I should really do is copy this. So I'm doing Command C to copy. And then I'm going to copy it an hour later than the current timeline. So if it starts at 5727, let's start it at 015727. And if it's a two hour show, you need to make sure it doesn't overlap with the existing one. And I have to figure out where I was for that change again. Okay, this is all the same. Looks like this was muted. So I'm gonna drop a marker. No, this is added back in. Okay, so right here, we've got an act break change. So here's the out, the old out, here's the new in. So you can mark it if you want, that way you can go back and check all your cuts. I just dropped a marker just so I know where to sync this up to. And then I'm going to the, the head frame of this and I'm doing, I'm gonna do a break. So command E to do a break and I'm gonna cut. So I copied and pasted to copy the material as kind of a safety. If anything gets really screwed up, I can go back to that. But I, I cut and paste to actually conform. So it's scary, but Command X, then I can just click the marker and then paste, Command V. And that should be lined up. So perfectly lined up. Uh, You'll want to go back and check. Another nice thing with the markers is you can go back and check the automation breakpoints and any fades that got weirdly messed up. 
Uh, let's go back to just comparing the guide tracks here. This is all fine. This is all fine. This is all lined up. So far, the conform on this has just been act break changes. So it's been pretty easy. Um, but things are about to get dicey. And we have, it looks like, some dialogue that was changed here. It, you'll have some really easy conforms where it's just a few little changes. And then some conforms that are hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of cuts that can take days to do by hand. So let's see what this changes here. You can see this waveform lines up nice and neat. Uh, it's perfectly in sync up until this point right here. So on the new cut, it looks like it changes right here. There's a shift. So what I can do is try to find this waveform. Ideally, you listen to it. Um, I can't let you guys listen to this. So we'll just scan visually and see kind of what. OK, that's three. That's a group of three. This is where it starts to get tricky because doing it by hand, I can see this waveform and this waveform match up. So this looks like it might be a take swap. Uh, you know, this is pretty noisy here. And that like this is all full of noise and this is pretty clean. So I think this is a take swap. I'm going to label this as new take. And then I have to figure out where it comes back in on this new cut to match up with the, the old cut because they probably just swapped this one take. This is where getting a roadmap from the editor can be really useful. Uh, EDLs are great too, but a, a like text file of all the changes they made, which they never they never keep. Uh, it, it, if they have, which is very rare, then it can really help you figure out like, oh yeah, this take was swapped out. Great. Now I know not to, you know, look for a crazy swap from the end of the show that goes to the middle. I can just cut it out and move on. So let's see. Okay, so we've got this. There's a new piece here. And it looks like, okay, these match up here. And this matches up. This matches up with this yeah it does so this waveform matches with this one and then this matches with this one and this matches with this one but then right here i'm just going to leave it as a garbage marker for now so this chunk here in the middle is going to go bye bye. It's a different take. And I can see, I can look at the edit tracks here. This is just an AF. This isn't really edited. Um, but I can see that it switches here to a different clip and then it switches back. So this should probably be fine. And you'll notice that I'm not doing this, I'm not dragging because even though it kind of works, you get into weird things with the automation when you're using plugin automation if you drag over stuff. So I always like to use cut and paste. So I'm going to cut this. And I'm let me just undo. OK, so I'm pasting it right here. OK, so cut. And then I'm going to zoom in and see how close I get with the paste. OK, so the paste is off. You can see these are off by like 15 frames or so. So I'm going to hit undo. Marker stays right here. And I can just move over. Uh, let's go. Oh, that's right. I have my nudge set to a second. Set your nudge to a frame. Because picture editor is cut in frames. So let's put it right here. Nope, too far that way. Go back. And we're off by a frame, undo, go over one frame. I'm just nudging left and right until the waveform lines up and then pasting. So you can you can cut, paste, and if it's off, nudge left or right until you get it perfectly lined up. 
And I'm going to call this, I'm going to say this is back in. That lets me know that the old material comes back in right there. Uh, let me just clean up. So see this little frame of audio here? You need to suspend groups, shift command G, and just get rid of that. So I'm going to have to slug in a new take here from the new AAF, which I'll grab after I conform everything. Uh, let's just continue on here. I'm going to re-enable groups. This, it looks like they made a little change here to where this comes in. But this is still, yeah, they just rolled this edit. But I'm going to redo that stuff anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm just zipping through, seeing where it goes out again. Here's another act break that went out. So let me actually measure this. It's two seconds. So Command E, cut. I can change the nudge back to seconds, go over two. One, two, paste. Bob's your uncle, we're back in. Let's see if there's any other changes on this. So I know I'm going fast, but I'm just scanning the waveforms to see that they're lined up. These are all lined up fine. Fine. This is all good. This is all good. Okay, that's it. Well, well no, that's not it. There's more. Yes, okay, here's another one. It's going to be the same deal because it's a, an act break. So I you can the nice thing about act breaks or anything with silence is you can just kind of cut anywhere and it helps keep your fades aligned on the the in and out of the clips. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to go left two frames or two seconds, sorry. And then bam, that's synced back up. This is all the same. This is all the same. Here's a change right here. Oh, well, this is, they messed up and they, they put a jet sound there. We don't want that. Same. And that's it. So we've conformed this. You see there's only a couple cuts. Um, and I need to grab this new material from the AAF. So I could import that and slug it in. Or I could use Field Recorder. Uh, workflow to replace it with some actual like ISOs and boom and all that. But, you know, this wasn't too bad of a conform and it took me, I don't know, I kind of did it in real time. So 10, 15 minutes. So very painless as far as conforms go. What I need to do at this point after making all these cuts is go back in and make sure that, uh, for example, like fades weren't deleted that I have all those set. And a quick way to go through and check all the cuts is drop your cursor in your video or guide track if your tab to transient is turned off and just hit tab and go through all the cuts. So here I need to grab new material. That fade looks good. Automation looks fine. Automation looks fine there. You can always highlight the automation and then go to automation and uh, thin, and that'll get rid of any weird little extra cuts you have you made in there that don't have any automation changes. Um, and I think you can smooth the automation. I'd have to look that up. I usually go through and and just make sure that stuff is fine, kind of by hand. Biggest issue is when you have big uh, jumps, for example, like a reverb shift, where it's parameters that literally stair step, kind of like this. That's where you have to be careful that you haven't blown out a like uh, audio. Um, what is it? Audio ease multiverb. They the impulse loader on that, for example. Like if you paste over a an impulse load command from your automation, that can kind of be a pain in the butt to fix. So just check all the the breaks, listen to everything, make sure it's good, and then you know move on with your mix or sound edit. So this, this is the manual way to do it in Pro Tools. It's not too bad that we've been doing this for years. Um, and it's, you know, it's just, it's just tedious and it takes a while. 
and you just want to like have a beer by the end of your day if you do it this way. So nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's totally fine. But let's talk about Matchbox, which speeds things up a little bit. I'm going to delete all these markers. I'm going to delete all of the conform that I just did. So Matchbox is a uh, an application made by Cargo Cult that does just what we did, except it does it faster and it saves you time and headaches because nobody likes conforming. At least nobody I've met. Uh, and it uses all kinds of different files. You can use AAFs, EDLs, XMLs, video files, or audio guide tracks. I found that EDLs and AAFs tend to work the best. And the video uh, video tracks are kind of second to those. And then the audio guide tracks, for whatever reason, seem to not work as good as the other ones. But you can use all of those different files to basically do the same thing we just did by hand. And it does it quite a bit faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide. This is the new video and audio guide tracks. And I've got the old one copied down here an hour later. So this one starts at 5827. This one starts at one hour 5827. If you have a two hour show or three hour, four hour, however many it is, if it's all in one big chunk and not in reels, just make sure you've got a gap between the material that you've copied for a matchbox to pull from and the new uh, video. If there's any overlap, it's going to screw up your conform and you're not going to be happy. So what I'm going to do is just hide these so we're not looking at these. Make sure my conform group is active. Verify that. Yes, I can drag. Uh, tracks are set to waveform. Aux is set to volume, which is how I like it. I've got the um, video frames off. The video is just blocks. So now I'm going to go into Matchbox, and I need to go for this one. We're going to look in here. I've got in each folder, I've got a new cut folder and an old cut folder. In the old cut folder, I have an EDL, an MOV, and a, a wave, which is the dialog guide track. And I've got the same thing in the new cut. As you can see, Matchbox wants the old sequence on top and the new sequence on bottom. So you can import it from Matchbox, I think, but it's super easy to just drag and drop. Again, the new, new stuff goes on the bottom. So I'm going to drop those there. And then I'm going to go to the old cut and drop this stuff here. Let's see. Looks like everything is good. Uh, you can bring up the video window to check these out, um, but you guys can't look at this video, so I'm not going to do that. But this starts at 5827. This starts at 5827. That's the most important thing that the time codes match up. Uh, I'm gonna. I did notice this. There's a V1 track, and this happens with some EDLs where you get a couple video clips. You can just delete those, and once you delete them all on this because we're not looking at the video clips, then this track should go away. So let's see, gone. So we've got pretty much matching stuff. Uh, I'm just looking at the dialogue EDL for this. You could also drag in the turnover AAF for each one, which I'll then have all the music and everything else. So the nice thing about Matchbox is if it doesn't find a match with those hard data things that have like take and, and C numbers and sound rolls and all that, it can actually compare these guide tracks or the video files, which takes quite a bit longer because it actually like searches within them for matches. Um, but it's nice because sometimes there's not a good assistant editor or there's no assistant editor or they can't get you the EDL and you still don't want to conform by hand. So it's just, it's nice that it can look at that data. Uh, so now that everything's in here, we go to compare and this matchup anything is going to look at all the data you've thrown in there it's going to take a long time and i don't like that i want to just tell it to look at the audio uh audio clips this always trips me up uh, so the the clips are like these orange individual scene take from their edits the files is like the guide track you know the dialogue guide or whatever you're using so i'm going to match up the audio clips 
first, and it's going to very quickly scan it and show me all the changes that happened here. So that looks, let's see where this one is. Okay. This looks similar to what I did by hand. It looks like, you know, the, the act breaks were shortened and there was a new take. But just to verify that, we can go to view and then the change summary. So the damage, 25%. This is somewhat arbitrary, but it's nice to scare <laughs> scare the producer or director with, well, you guys recut it and look how hard this is for me. And, and you should really think about paying me X amount more dollars because, well, here's the number, it's 25%. So it's not really, I'm sure there's an algorithm that tell, that Matchbox uses to come up with this, but you know, if it's not red, it's usually fine. So once it gets to the red, like 70, 80, 100% damage, then it's like, okay, this is a day killer. It's gonna take me all day to do this. Uh, it tells you all kinds of stuff, like what's new, what's dropped, untouched, updated, how much longer, shorter it is, the ranges match, blah, blah, blah. You can go in here and matches, look at all the the diffs and matches and all everything, like it's, it's pretty cool. So, uh, this is just kind of gives you an idea. I'll do this often before I watch the new cut, especially if it's a long program, because I don't want to watch and second guess like, well, did this change? Did that? This kind of gives you like a quick overview of how much change there is, which is great, um, but it doesn't actually get us conformed. That is in the reconform tab. Now, if, if this didn't find any matches or I wanted to scan, for example, the this gap, I can shift click there and then I can go scan or is it it is match up video files or audio files and selected gaps so if the EDL or AF didn't find a match here with that hard data then you can say okay well in these gaps I want you to actually search the QuickTime video or the um, guide track and that would be video video files and selected gaps audio files and selected gaps there's also handy shortcuts there for you so I can do that. Uh, let's try. Let's try this. It's probably gonna take a while. All right. Let's see if it finds any matches in this gap. It did not. So it was worth checking, but it didn't find it. It's probably a new take or something. Uh, all right. So we've got this. We went through the rigmarole of scanning the video file. I could scan the dialogue guide, but I've already conformed it, so I know it's not gonna find that. Uh, but what we need to do now is make sure our group is enabled. We've got our old cut over here, cause we're gonna let Matchbox do its thing. You guys saw how long it took me to do it by hand. It, I skipped through a couple cuts, but it was maybe 10, 15 minutes. So let's compare that. Let's John Henry this and reconform uh, with Matchbox. Okay, so this is important to have your frame rate correct. Reconform speed, I just leave it on normal. I like to copy and paste because I want to keep my old material over here. We do want to reconform the clips. Uh, I like to drop cut markers so I can, after Matchbox does its thing, I can go through each marker and check the cut, make sure I crossfade stuff where it needs to and the automation isn't messed up if I'm doing a mix session. This offset tells it how far down the timeline to look for the old material and I've got it set to an hour. Like I said before, if it's a two hour movie, you'll want to set this much higher than that. And then I think that's some, you can do the auto gaps. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and, and then just run it. Let's see how long it takes. So it says it's going to take about a minute, but we'll find out. It's interesting. The, the conforming, doesn't take that long. It seems like what takes the longest for Matchbox is dropping the markers, which is kind of interesting to me. So it's done the conform. Now it's going back and adding markers. It took maybe 40 seconds to conform. So that's a sizable improvement. The more complicated the conform is, the faster, or I should say, the more complicated the conform is, the more time 
slash money matchbox will save you. If, it, if it's a couple cuts, just do it by hand. But I've had projects where there was like 200 plus changes and yeah, it takes, it would take multiple days to do it by hand. And with matchbox, it's down to like, you know, half a day or so. So it's done. Uh, let's just compare this to, we can compare this to the existing one. Now it did, why did it drop this out here? Oh, let me suspend groups. I just want to kind of check this out and see. I'm not sure why it did this. I could have scanned this uh, or like done a force heal on it to make sure that everything was good. So I'll need to let me investigate this. It's a problem with doing this for YouTube is I want it to not be a two hour long video, but I also want to show you kind of the right way or different ways to do things. This is another spot. It didn't quite match up. Okay, but I can just do that. So you still have to go through and like, you know, do stuff manually, but it definitely saves you a lot of headaches. And then little things like this, little hanging chads or whatever you want to call them, just get them out of there. Uh, and then I can drop the cursor on the old cut video and tab and find all of the breakpoints. This I think was that, yeah, this was the take swap they did. So you see it left me a big empty hole there. And I'll label this new take. This edit will need some massaging. This doesn't quite look right, actually. Oh, this is the end of the new take. That's why. That gap looks good. That's just the commercial break or act break. That's good. All right. Overall, it did pretty good. Uh, there was like one weird little spot that I'll need to check out a little bit. But, you know, like anything, any other kind of automated process, it's never perfect and there's always trade-offs. So the trade-off here is that it's going to go way faster. This looks like just a volume change. Yeah, that's the same material. They just turned it way down in the new cut. I need to... Mark that too. Uh, yeah, so aut automatic tools can save you a lot of time, but you still have to go back and, and check their work. Oh, this is actually not that bad because they're not foolproof and that's the trade-off. It's like an automatic transmission. It shifts for you, but it's not gonna maybe put you in the right gear 100% of the time. It's getting better and each version of Matchbox seems to improve that stuff, but you still have to go double check it. Let's just make sure the automation, like this gap with the setting of the clean automation gap, it did a nice ramp up there. So that's really useful if you're doing mix sessions. Um, and then I've always got my material, old material down here untouched. So if I need to go back and grab something, I can. At this point, what I'll normally do after I've checked all the gaps uh, is hide and deactivate the old cut because uh, it makes me sad to look at all those changes. This one wasn't too bad, but on something where it's like a hundred changes, it's just, ugh, it's yucky. So that's it. We've conformed it. Uh, we've got maybe some, a little bit of work to do with, with smoothing some of the cuts over, you know, just standard things like making sure there's fade ins and cross fades, uh, Here's one, here's one. It's nice having the markers because it, oh, that's right. This doesn't have, this doesn't have handles for, because it's the AAF, it doesn't have handles for crossfade, but it's nice having the markers because you can 
you can drop the cursor up here on the markers and tab through that too. Um, so that's the technical side of conforming. It gets really tricky with music because if the composer is not conforming their own stuff, you have to figure out how to make the the beats line up. And that's a whole, that gets into like music editing and music theory. So a little too much for, for this video. Um, but one important thing with conforms is on a financial side, you know, if you're doing this and it takes you half an hour, you maybe can get by with not charging for it, but it's technically extra work. So make sure that you put in your contract that, that the work you're performing is based on this edit and any further edits are going to incur more money. It's going to cost more to do for you to do more work. So you can say, you know, it, it's based on this hourly rate or, you know, however you want to work the financial side of it. Just don't, I would say don't do it for free because that sets the standard that it's just a part of the workflow that they can keep editing while you're working. And it didn't used to be that way. It used to be they'd lock picture, you'd work, you'd mix and you deliver the files and that's it. Now it seems more like you start and then they re-edit and then you conform and then they re-edit again, you conform again. And they have to pay for that because it's a lot of extra work. So just make sure it's either in your contract or you get it in writing somehow that if if you guys keep editing this, I'm going to charge you more um, because it's it's a pain in the butt to do this. Hey, thank you guys for checking out this video on conforming. And I hope it's helpful to you if you have a project that changes, which if you don't now, you will someday. Uh, it happens all the time. Seems like it gets more common every year. So uh, and and I'm also sorry for not making more videos lately. I've been working a lot. Uh, this is like the first break that I've gotten since like I made the, the first run of videos. Uh, it's been all union shows that I've been working on. And uh, it's nice to have a little break, but it's also difficult in the summertime for me to sit indoors and and make YouTube videos with that break. So I'll probably do another video or two if you have an idea of what would be helpful to not just you, but other people on audio post production that I haven't covered in my other videos. Drop a comment. Give me some ideas. I'm always looking for uh, ideas of what to make. I feel like I covered the basics pretty well with the first run of videos, but um, maybe I can get into some more advanced uh, concepts. I've been doing tons of really difficult dialogue editing lately, so I could do more videos on that. Um, or just, you know, give me some ideas. And, and thank you guys for continuing to check out uh, my videos. My goal with this series is just to help people learn kind of something that isn't really talked about very much, which is doing audio post-production for um, film and TV projects. So uh, thank you guys for subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next video.